from here in Times Square, sending it back to you guys on the couch. Thanks, Annie. Yeah, lots of stuff to talk mm -hmm. about today. Mm -hmm. Let's get to it. The Emmys are just one thing that has Hollywood making headlines. It's time for our Pop Talk. Jordi Lippi from Life and Style Weekly is here to give us the uh, morning scoop. So I want to ask you real quickly, Anne, talking about uh, Mad Men didn't win. Any other yeah. big losers that you were surprised yeah, they didn't losers. take anything away? Um, well, I was really surprised, again, like it was mentioned, John Cryer winning for that. I mean, he was up against Larry David and Alec Baldwin. Mm -hmm. So I just can't believe that two and a half men, especially with all the you controversy, know, controversy and criticism that it's been facing, that it took such a top honor home. And isn't 30 Rock done? I would think they'd yeah. give them like a send-off Emmy for we, we Yeah, right? You know, I wanted to ask you, what were your like, biggest surprises? Was that one of the yes, surprises Yes, absolutely. That was one of the biggest surprises, was 30 Rock really not taking anything home. And But I thought Tina Fey still looked fabulous. Yeah. And she even said on the red carpet that she wasn't sure that they were going to win anything that year. But eh, so yeah. I think this was definitely a shock. Now, one, another big story over the weekend, uh, Billy Joe Armstrong and his meltdown. Can you tell us about this? <laughs> Absolutely. Oh. Life and Style was actually at the iHeartRadio Music Festival in Las Vegas on Friday night, and Billy Joe Armstrong sort of just went a little crazy. He started cursing and smashing his guitar and flipping the bird, all because he thought that his set was cut short for Usher and Rihanna. Well, that turned out not to be true, and then two days later, his rep came out and said, Yep, he's going to rehab for substance abuse. It's not clear exactly what the substance is, but this isn't the first time he's been in this situation before. In Italy last month, he was sent to a mm. hospital but for... But that was dehydration yeah. and exhaustion, supposedly. Supposedly. It was mm. an ailment. And then in 2003, he was arrested for drunk driving. But this comes at probably the worst time ever for Green Day because their new album is supposed right. to be coming out. I'm sure that they had a lot of promotional things lined up. And now Billy Joe Armstrong won't be there. And he's sort of the front man, I feel like, or the face right. of Green Day, you know, pretty often. So... They can't, they, the rep said that he won't be making any of those appearances, mm. so probably the worst possible timing, but we're glad that he's getting help. Yeah. Mm. Well, Arnold Schwarzenegger, the Arnold, <laughs> coming out with his, uh, his memoir, is this tomorrow? Um, I believe, yes, it's tomorrow. Soon. Anyway, he yes. about the moment when he comes clean, about his love child. He doesn't stay away from controversy, does he? Yeah, what do you think about the book? I think it's absolutely insane. I mean, he talks about the entire details about this affair. He waits until the end of the book, obviously, oh, so to reveal anything. So you got to go through the whole <laughs> 600 pages or whatever it is to get to it. But he says that he denied it for years and years to Maria. And then on the day that he left the governor's office, Maria took him to therapy and said, you need to come clean now. Did you follow? that child and he finally admitted to doing it. Wow. And Maria for the win. <laughs> Seriously. Okay. But he'd been lying all those years and it was just, you know, it was all for the politics I assume and I found his excuses in the book a little bit lame. He mm -hmm. said that he was embarrassed, he was addicted to lying, and he didn't want to come clean to Maria's family. Obviously, she's part of the Kennedy clan, so sure. he was embarrassed by that. But I think maybe writing this book is, you know, kind of another jab at her and bringing the family back mm -hmm. into light when I feel like people sort of were getting over it a little yeah. bit. But yeah. it'll be an interesting read. And it's not dro dropping. October 1st. <laughs> the memoir is released October 1st. But you gotcha. got a sneak peek. You were lucky. Yeah, well, I didn't get a sneak peek yet, but I did read about all oh, of it. Oh, okay. Well, now, you did get a sneak peek of something else that we need to talk to you about, and that's Mila Kunis and Ashton yes. Kutcher. Were they, like, on some romantic date or something? Absolutely. I, you know, they've been denying their romance forever, and then they were spotted making out in Central Park, and then I actually <laughs> saw them at dinner on Saturday night on a double date. Really? Oh. Oh. We were here at dinner. Oh, Everybody <laughs> wants to go now. I was at Faso in the West Village, mm -hmm. and Mila was rubbing Ashton's neck, and they actually sat, up, sat outside for 10 minutes and were full on making out and what? enjoying some cozy time away from the other couple, and they definitely are together. Wow. But what's the craziest thing about this is that Ashton and Demi split over a year ago, yet neither one of them has filed for divorce. Hmm. So what is he doing with Mila? It makes me wonder, is he trying to make Demi jealous? Why haven't they filed? So I think it's a story that we're still going to have to keep watching, but oh, they are yeah. very much on. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Were they sworn wow. by paparazzi? No, <laughs> they were enjoying a very quiet evening. They were very dressed down. I mean, it's a nice restaurant, and Ashton and Mila were in jeans. He had a baseball cap on like he always does. She had a sweater on, didn't appear to have any makeup on, so they're very comfortable with mm. each other, sharing off each other's plate and everything. Oh, so cool. cute. Yeah. That's like Lady in the Tramp. Did they yeah. have that spaghetti? The spaghetti. Yeah, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Candlelight, and yeah, some music was playing. <laughs> nice. Kim Z from Real Housewives of Atlanta, new baby. Yes, I mean, we met Kim Z, what, four years ago. She was a single mom of two, 
so much has changed since then. Now she's married, and Life and Style just had an exclusive with her about her birth of her second son, Cash. She just had another son just over a year ago. Mm -hmm. and uh, she's Irish twins. Yes, <laughs> yes. And she said she's happier than ever, and she already wants more kids. Croy, her husband, is a football player, mm -hmm. so they said they want a whole football team. But, of course, she's a housewife, so she can't stay away from controversy for too long. You know, the cast hasn't seen the baby yet, so that pretty much but says that there that? are... I mean, well, she's had, well, she's had some issues with the other Exactly, that's right? my point. So I don't think, uh, you know, anything's been resolved just yet. And she had to move out of her mansion into a townhouse oh, when she was horror. six months pregnant. And um, <laughs> even her own estranged mother hasn't seen the baby yet. So there's still wow. plenty of drama in Kim's Whoa. life, but she is much happier, she told Life She style. should be on a reality show. You know, <laughs> I think we might see that unfold. Okay, on good. On the house her fourth good. baby. Jersey. Fourth baby, yes. Wow. She's got two older daughters. Two older daughters, that's correct. And then wow. she just had a son 15 months ago, so she is just popping them out. Well, no congrats, <laughs> congrats to her from the couch. A medical term. <laughs> Jordy Lippy, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. We appreciate it. All right, a Harvard professor says he knows the secret to happiness, and he is live on the couch to share his tips. And it's one of the most